everyone welcome back to my channel my name is Lord Keith how you doing so this class is going to be on how to draft a basic bodies with that what is the essence of that in a house fit it is to give a nice fitting and show our shapes and curves <laughs> so if you've missed that previous class on how to draft the dartless bodies I'll put the link in the description box below so before we go to the work table please check out my other channel the Keith's kitchen and the Keith's signatures for lovely DIYs are beginner friendly like this lovely cape top you can see here, I will put the link in the, in the description box below so that you can't just make it, it is beginner friendly, yeah. So right now back to this, you can follow me on Instagram, the key signatures, and on Facebook, so innovation. So let's just get clear to the world table. My pattern paper is ready with the boxes of the measurements, so I will quickly go over that. To make your box, you need the largest circumference and then the back waist measurement. Because this is a half scale, you need your ball circumference because that is the largest. And for the back width measurement I have for mine, measurement here is 16 and a half inches. Now, for the largest circumference, which is 38 inches, I'm going to divide that by two because we are working with both the center back and center front so this will be the center back and then center front so we need half so half of 38 will give me 19 inches so looking at what i have i have a box of 19 upward now to determine the vertical measurement you need the back waist measurement which i said is 16 and a half so as you can see i have 16 and a half all true so but when i got to the front panel i extended it which i'm going to explain why i extended and then how to close that for so having done that the next thing will be the ham side depth or the ham hole depth so that is easy to determine just divide your back waist measurement into two and then add quarter of an inch and in most cases if the person has a big ham or is larger you can add up to half an inch 16 and a half divided by two will give me eight and quarter plus extra quarter in that will make it eight and a half so this is my arm side day the next thing now to start we start with the back panel the first thing will be to insert your back width measurement the back width measurement here is 14 then you divide by two to have seven it is advisable you add extra quarter of an inch to that because it's better you have your half feet loose determine that you can go to the neck region the next week the next week i'll be making use of is two and three quarter because i'm working with the medium size and then if you want more details on how to determine because the neck depth and going up determines on the shape and size of the person you are working with on the sizes whether it's small medium or large so for a medium sized person i'll make use of two and three quarter for me, is a little over three inches. Then I'll go up by one inch, which also determine based on your size. I haven't done that with my the neckline. Just going by three quarter of an inch. This has to be straight. That's beautiful. The next thing is to determine the slope. For these, unlike the dartless basic bodies, will come down by three quarter of an inch because this has to be fitted. Three quarter. Mark a parallel line. The shoulder measurement from my measurement here is 15 inches. Remember, we have taken two and three quarter here. So 15 divided by 2, that should be 7 and a half. 3 quarter, just place 3 quarter on the neck here. Then you rotate till you have 7 and half. Sorry, 3 quarter. So 7 and a half is it. On that parallel line you drill. Shoulder 
just look as the form. The next thing is to go to the ham hole. Now, you will need to insert your bust measurement, but remember, we use a bust measurement to determine the box. So that means from this point to this point is actually the bust measurement. Now I will have to go up by two inches, which is the standard. That will be the first notch. Get the midpoint here. Move a quarter inch from this first notch and then connect. The handle is formed. The next thing will be to insert the that here you will need your bust pan. The bust pan from my measurement is eight inches, and you will need half of that, which is four. By standard, you just take half an inch for the dart on both sides. Half, half. From the hand side depth, just go down by one inch. We have to insert the waist circumference the waist circumference from here is 30 inches so when i divide that by four i will have seven and a half remember we have taken half an inch here which sum totals to one so you have to add that one to the seven and a half to make it eight and a half and connect to the post on the arm side there So we are done with the back so the back pattern is ready so as time goes on we talk about how to make some fitting at the back whereby we're taking some similar one but that is not necessary now so since i knew i went up by one inch here so i would have to extend the front panel by that same one inch so that is what i have here then you can close it up So the front panel now, the first thing I'm going to do is to insert the chest width, just as we did for the back. The chest width here is 13 inches. So divided by two, that should give me six and half. to insert the bust level or the bust point the bust level here vertically is 10 and half so from the closure here i'm going to insert 10 and half that will be the bust level insert the neck depth and neck width we made use both two and three quarter for the neck width here so two and three quarter here two and three quarter then with about one sixteenth of an inch make sure this piece is a little bit straight I'm going to do now is to insert the front waist measurement remember it is different from the back so the front waist measurement is 18 inches so I'm going to measure from the closure 
and measure 18 inches so meaning i have to go down a bit from the normal back waist measurements then you square it up This is the front waist measurement from the nape here to this very one. This is the back. So having done that, we can now insert the bust span measurements. Remember, it is four inches. Your bust span now will be inserted on the bust level and not the hand side bed. So it will be on the front waist measurement. For us to now construct the that which you need to pay attention so how you have to do is to take the measurement of what you have here so it is just a bar less than five inches so you get the half so what you have to do to make it easier fold your measuring tape to so have a crease let's see so from the neck width here just mark half of that is here i'm going to connect from this half straight to the bust point so can you see what we have the next thing is first let me determine the shoulder slope for this very one so what i will do is to come down by three quarter inch from here three quarter So we have gotten the shoulder slope for one side of the dart. Beautiful. So the next thing now is to go up by two inches. Remember, we went up by two inches. So two inches now from the hand side depth, mark the points on this line. And at that point, just take your measuring tape or your ruler and make sure the one inch is parallel to this line that goes up to the knee so can you see the line is parallel with the line so just mark that point so just a point all you have to do now is from the bust level and this point extend it to the closure line i have to do a lot of research to come up with these just to simplify for my fans can you see that and now that is formed. So what determines the wideness of your shoulder depends on your shoulder measurement. Like for me, I am wider, so my hip that tends to be wider, so that determines it. So for a medium size plus a small size person, you won't have as much data as that of a plus size. So since we've determined this, another easy step we are going to do now is this. Take the measurement of whatever you have here, from the shoulder slope to the bust level, and just rotate it down to this very point and mark it. Can you see that? So after doing that now, we want to determine the rest. So the next thing we are going to do now is to determine the shoulder slope. So remember here we came down by three quarter inch. So plus the one we came up by. So that means the total inches that we came down by is one and three quarter because remember we went up by one inch three quarter so that's one and three quarter so you just had extra three quarter inch to this one and three quarter for the slope of the front so that will total up to two and a half so from this new closure line just come down by two and a half and make a parallel line So now, this same measurement, now remember it was half of it that we placed here, 
we are going to continue from this point. So the remaining half. So I'll have to extend this line. So we decrease, I know the half. So from that point, just come down to rotate it till you have it on this line. So this is what I have. So I'm just going to close that hole. So we have a shoulder line now. So when you just go through over it, so half from there, place it here. So we have this exact same measurement as that of the back. So it is time now time for us to finish the ham hole measurement. We are still going to close it to redraw the shoulder line to have it accurate. So what you are going to do now is that this is the chest line, remember, for the front. But we have drifted away from it. So what you have to do now is this. Come down here, measure the two inches as usual. Good. Come here, measure whatever distance you have here. So that's one and three quarter. Come down here and measure that one and three quarter. Insert a point at that region. Take your hand hole. Here you have to rotate it to work on it to have the ham hole. And you see that so the ham hole has been formed. So for some people, it might not be as wide as this. So it is your shoulder measurement that will determine the amount of that you take. For someone that has a, sh uh, a shorter um, shoulder measurement you don't need so much that so that is what would determine the wideness of the that like for me now when i make my own pattern it doesn't really come out as much as this mine is just three inches so it depends your shoulder measurements with your boss so everything needs to do with size and shape so can you see how beautiful and easy that was so let's quickly finish the waist area the next thing now is to take the that so but also for someone that is not busty half an inch on both sides is fine but for this measurement the person is quite busty so that means i'll take up to three quarter of an inch on both sides three quarter, three quarter. and from the bust level now i will come down by one and quarter for someone that is not really busty one is fine but one and quarter to one and a half for someone that is busty. So can you see we are taking the dash from the new waist line for the front. So the dash is ready now. So the next thing is to insert the waist measurements. So then the waist measurement will be inserted on the back. So remember there's a little alteration for the front we took one and a half inches for the dart. Why for the back is one. So this one in one and a half inches will be added to the seven and a half to make it nine. So just measure nine on the back waist measurements and then you connect to it your ruler. Let me see what we have. So for someone that is not busty, you might not even have the extension of the front of the of this front uh, waist measurements. So there are times here I have up to half. Some could be quarter for small size person. It could be the same thing with the back. So just a little tip on that. These are basic bodies with that. So in our next tutorial, we'll be talking about the bust that the manipulation of that and all that which is very easy to so what we just want to do now is to cross check the shoulder so that we don't have one longer than the other part of cross checking the shoulder is very important why because in the process of transferring the measurements here to this point you might make a mistake so let's confirm that so here i have just a bar less than 10. so let me just measure this on the boss level yeah i have exactly 10. so can you see this is shorter so that is why this part is very very important okay so 
what I would do now was this. Have a shoulder so if you take the measurement of what we have here it's just going to be the same as the back can you see that? so wonderful so exactly one bar shorter than five as we have for the back so i can now cut it up so now this is the new shoulder slope i'm just going to quickly cut that So the back has been cut out so to cut out the front because we don't just want to cut out the that so just fold back with what you have and use your tracing wheel to just trace the shoulder around you might not see that but with my marker you'll be able to see what i'm doing This is the basic bodies with that a shoulder that or a princess seam. So don't forget to use your pattern notcher to notch your notches on the pattern. Hope my tutorial on how to make the basic bodies pattern with that has been helpful. If it has, please give me a giant thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to check out my other channel. Follow me on Instagram, the key signatures, and on Facebook, so in revision. So I have to go down and please, we have a online class on pattern drafting coming up on the 19th of October. If you are interested, contact us through the contact number below. I remain your girl with his